about apomixis and polyembryology. So generally, the seed is formed after fertilization. Embryo is formed when one of these sperm cell fuses with the egg cell and uh, then they are going to form the zygote. Zygote develops to form the embryo. In the previous classes we had studied the structure of a monopart embryo. Before that previous class we had studied the structure of dipot embryo, the heart shaped embryo with suspense shaft. If you remember all those diagrams that I had drawn in uh, previous classes. So the embryo is formed after the formation of zygote. But in some of the members of the family Asteraceae or sunflower family and grasses, you find there is a formation of seeds without fertilization. Okay? But here it is not parthenocarpine. We are talking about apomexis. There is a formation of seeds without fertilization. So they are known as that in Asteraceae and grasses. So we are not talking about parthenocarpine. Okay? Uh, they, for what is parthenocarpy and the uh, difference of apomixis? Parthenocarpy is formation of fruits without fertilization. Apomixis, we are talking about formation of seeds without fertilization. Okay? So apomixis is asexual reproduction which is mimicking sexual reproduction. In a sexual reproduction, the male gamete fuses with the female gamete to produce the zygote after fertilization and that zygote develops to form the embryo. But in uh, asexual reproduction, there is no formation of zygote at all. There is no two parents involved in asexual reproduction. Generally in asexual reproduction, only one parent is involved. Whereas in sexual reproduction, two parents are involved, male and female, or it can be androgenum and dimensionum in case of a plant. So asexual reproduction mimicking Sexual reproduction itself is apomixis. Apomixis is again the formation of seeds without fertilization, without the process of fertilization. Okay. Now, how do we develop this apomictic seeds? So we want to have apomictic seeds in hybrids. I'll tell you why we require, but there are methods of doing that. See, the egg cell during the megasporogenesis and megagametogenesis, the megaspore mother cell divides to form what? They divide to form the megaspore, which is haploid, isn't it? The megaspore mother cell was diploid. But here the egg cell is formed without that meiotic cell division. There is no megasporogenesis. Directly the egg cell starts functioning, the megaspore mother cell directly starts functioning as the egg cell. So it would be deployed, deployed egg cell. So deployed egg cell, egg cell is deployed because of absence of reduction cell division or deployed egg cell because of absence of meiosis. So the megaspore mother cell directly functions as a zygote without fertilization and they develop to form the apomictic seeds. That is one method of formation of apomictic seeds. They are deployed but without fertilization. Rather, there is no reduction cell division. Next method is new cellus. If you have looked into the structure of a ovule, and this was the embryo sac, surrounding the embryo sac, this zone is the new cellular tissue, isn't it? This zone is the new cellular tissue. One of the new cell tissue increases in size, they form the megaspore mother cell. The megaspore mother cell undergoes megasporogenesis and megagonmetogenesis to form female gametophyte or embryo sac. The embryo sac, mature embryo sac, which is of monosporic type, it is what type? A nucleate seven cell, mature embryo sac. All that we had discussed earlier. So now the new cellus, what happens here is some of them have formed the, one of them has formed the embryo sac. But some of the new cellular cell, they protrude into the embryo sac and they start functioning as embryo. They start functioning as embryo. So without fertilization it is happening. So new cellus starts dividing and protrudes into the embryo sac and they are going to form multiple embryos. So generally you find one seed, one embryo, but in case of citrus and mango seeds, you find more than one embryo. And why is there this 
presence of more than one embryo in a seed or ovule, we call it as polyembryonic. See, more than one embryo in a seed is called as polyembryonic. See, the embryo is formed by fertilization, only one embryo is formed. But here in certain plants like citrus, all the uh, uh, varieties of citrus plants, it can be orange, lemon, it can be the grapefruit, which is nothing but chakota, sweet lime, lime. All this comes under this citrus variety of fruits and mango, they exhibit this polyembryology. How is the embryo formed? Without fertilization, apomixis. Okay. So it's an asexual method of reproduction. Apomixis is an asexual method of reproduction where it mimics that of a sexual reproduction. Mimicry manipulation, nothing else. Okay. Polyembryony is presence of more than one embryo in a seed or ovule. We call it as polyembryony. Now why do we require all this? See, hybrids we are producing plants. So take a plant which has very good leaf, another plant has very good number of flowers are there okay, and they produce good fruits. I want to have leaves, flowers and fruits together. What we do is by crossing these two plants after many generations, we get that ideal hybrid, a desired hybrid where the plant has good number of leaves, flowers as well as fruits okay <coughs> all these three things together <coughs> they are going to constitute the hybrid and as a result of this the hybrid now it has to be we have obtained a desired plant but this hybrid what you have to do is you have to multiply it but in nature what happens if this hybrid you have got one generation you have fulfilled your requirement with a desired plant having good amount of leaves, good amount of flowers, good amount of fruits. But what you require is this hybrid should multiply with the same genotype. That might not be possible because in nature when they undergo pollination, again it undergoes cross pollination and it results in a new variety. So you lose out this ideal plant, natural betray. And hybrids purchasing this every season, hybrid plants, or hybrid seeds by the farmers, it's very expensive. Every season he has to purchase the seeds. That is expensive. Second one, they are also very costly and uh, it's a very cumbersome process. Producing hybrids is a very slow process. Now I have obtained a hybrid. I want the same variety of plants. Then I can utilize apomixes. If I am going to make this hybrid into apomix, apomixes plants, they do not undergo sexual reproduction or but they produce seeds. Production of seeds without fertilization. We call that as apomixis. And using those seeds, when I sow it into other places, I get the same variety of plant. It is a clone. You get clone because there is no chances of the genotype being changed. Because they are deployed cell apparent our plant, they are hybrid plant, they are going to be because they are going by asexual reproduction. All the seeds that we obtain from this apome, from that hybrid apome, they are all going to be similar. Cloning in the same type of identical copies you obtain when you sow the seeds into the soil. So that's the reason researchers and scientists are very keen to obtain this apome. They are making work on two aspects of it. Active research on apomix. First of all, apomix is applied to citrus plant to mango and natural adaptive. Grasses are adaptive. Sunflower family is natural adaptive. A natural adaptive is the gene responsible. If the gene is the gene, then we can manipulate in other plants also. So that is what they are doing. First is the gene of the plant. So that is what they are doing. First is the gene. Genetics of apomic, they are studying about. Now the present research involves two areas. One is understanding the genetics of apomix. If I understand what gene is responsible for making an apomix, I can introduce that gene into any plant and I can obtain apomix, isn't it? So that we are trying to understand. Second point that we are trying to do research on is 
ट्रांसफरिंग दिस अपोमिक्टिक जीन्स इनटू द हाइब्रिड वैरायटीज ಅವಾಗ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ಸು ಸ್ಟೆಬಿಲೈಸ್ ಆದರೆ ನಮಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಸುಲಭವಾದಂಥ ರೇಟಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದೇ ಗಿಡದಿಂದ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಏನು ಬಿತ್ತನೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೇ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಪೀಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟೆಡ್ ಈ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಮನಿ ಆನ್ ಪರ್ಚೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟೆಬಿಲೈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ ಜೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟು ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ಆ ಏರಿಯಾದಲ್ಲೂ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಒಂದು ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ ಆಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಗಿಡ ಯಾವ ಜೀನು ಹೊಣೆಗಾರಿಕೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಕಂಡಿಡಿತಾ ಇದೆ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಜೀನ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ಸಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಜೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಸೊ ಕೆನ್ ದೇ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದಿ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ಸಸ್ ಅಪೋಮಿಕ್ಸಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ seeds without fertilization apomixis is also process where asexual reproduction mimics sexual reproduction okay they also form embryo but these embryos are unfertilized embryo okay that is the only advantage that you have in case of apomixis polyembryony is formation of more than one embryo in the ovule if any seed has more than one embryo we call it as polyembryony you can notice that in citrus seeds you can take the seeds separate the cotyledons squeeze out this embryos and observe it under micros microscope you find a lot of embryos some of these embryos are formed because of the new cellular protrusions into embryo sac those new cellulars they are going to form the embryo so you can understand about those new cellular embryos by squeezing uh, the seeds of citrus and observing it under microscope you can notice a large number of embryos on it okay so this is what you have to remember and this completes our short topic on sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay